Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Dhanavalabha Girivar Dhanare Daya Gopi Dhanavalabha Girivar Dhanare Yasa Nanana Brajananda Ranjana Yasa Nanana Brajananda Ranjana Problem, problem. I hold the problem. Take it off in the time. Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Daya Radha Madhava Punya Bihari Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adrita Radha Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vinna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Hari Rama Hari Ram 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 Hari Hari Jaya Prabhupada 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 Jaya Prabhupada Rabu pa, Rabu pa, Rabu pa, Jaya Jaya Rabu pa. Shirvau pa ki jai Hari Nam Sankirtan yagi ki jai. Sisi Nichananda Rama Ki Jai Sisi Nichananda Trayodasi Mahamahatsava Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vinda Ki Jai 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 Sri Chitanya Jaya Nichananda Jai Jai Sri Chitanya Jaya Nichananda Jai Adaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vinda Jai Adaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vinda Jai Adaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Shri Sri Nityananda So today is the appearance day of Lord Nichananda. Mm. In the Brahma Samhita, it is stated that the Lord is Nana Avataram, which means he appears again and again in so many different forms. And in each of these different forms, he has a particular purpose. For example, we find Lord Nisringadev, who appears in the form of a half man, half lion, he is showing the unbridled power of the Lord for the purpose of protecting Prahlad. Oh, we see that um, it said Balaram and Mohini Murti and Vamana, they show the beauty of the Lord. Uh, it is said that Prithu Maharaj, he is Bu has Bhupalana Shakti, he is protecting the earth. Um, and Lord Nichananda is particularly the personality uh, who represents mercy, um, which is important considering who we are dealing with. As I mentioned this morning, welcome residents of Kali Yuga. You, somehow or other, 
we have all taken birth in this age. It is the age of materialism. It is the age of weakness. It is the age of, of compromise, the age of corruption. Uh, it is that age. And somehow or other, um, it is said, Iti sodasa kam nam nam kali kalma sanasanam. By uh, chanting these 16 syllables, we can rise above the influence of Kali. In the uh, Mahabharat, there is the story of Nala and Damayanti, which is a long story, which I will not enter into tonight. But in the story, there is a point where Nala becomes possessed by Kali. And when he becomes possessed by Kali, he doesn't realize that he's possessed. Rather, he's thinking that he's making his own decisions. He's all the time thinking, I, I know what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm making my choices. But the reality is, he's actually influenced by Kali. So, to become free from the influence of Kali is not a simple thing, actually. And everyone is influenced by Kali. Mm. Um, which means we are full of vice and we are weak. That is the situation. So how to deal with this? Mm. Nityananda is the personification of, of service to, to Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Krishna is the object of worship. Krishna appears again as Chaitanya. And Krishna has a brother named Balaram who is his immediate expansion. Balaram then comes back as Nichitnanda. Vrajendra Nandan ye sachi sutta se Balaram hole nidai. So, Krishna from Vindavan, Vrajendanandan, comes as Chaitanya, and Balaram comes as Nichananda. Um, Nichananda then is the same Supreme Lord as, as Krishna or as Chaitanya, the same, non different, but in a different mood, in the mood of service, and that is the essence of the difference. One is receiving service, the other one is rendering service. So this is our, uh, our first understanding. And then the result of that service is, is that Nichananda becomes very ecstatic and more ecstatic than Chaitanya because this is the nature of devotional service, that it makes us more ecstatic. Um, so... I'm just giving this now um, as a little introduction. I also mentioned some of these things this morning um, so that we can see Lord Nichananda is fully absorbed in service to Lord Chaitanya. He is also the Supreme Lord, but in the mood of a servant. In this way, he's the Supreme Teacher. Therefore, Nichananda is the original spiritual master because he is the original servant of the Supreme Lord and in this way is teaching by his own example of how, how actually to um, go through this transformation of, uh, from ordinary consciousness to transcendental bliss. Nichananda, always absorbed in great happiness. Um, that is his nature. Um, yeah. I have to think for a moment where I'll go now with this lecture. Because um, the second time I speak on this topic today, and it's a little... Um, I, have to f I want to find a new angle from this morning, otherwise I'm sort of like a tape recorder. Um, 
Lord Nityananda is the source of our strength. And our strength is really happiness. Um, when we are happy, then what can touch us? When we are happy, then our motivation is very strong. Um, because the living being is by nature looking for happiness. Anandamai Byasat. Therefore, when we are doing something out of duty, oh, that's very difficult. That is very difficult. So Nichananda gives us a taste of happiness, and that is actually how mercy works. Uh, mercy means that we are uplifted, uplifted to a higher platform than where we were. And, and so it happens. Um, not only are we uplifted to a higher platform by the mercy of Nichananda, not only are we beginning to understand that the goal of life is devotional service, but he also gives us the motivation. He gives us the motivation to carry on on our own. Uh, he may initially attract us to devotional service, but then why continue? But because he also gives us a taste, then we get the motivation to continue on our own in devotional service. Um, so in the first stage, in the midst of all our ignorance, in the midst of not knowing what life is all about, in the midst of doing so many foolish things, somehow or other, transcendental knowledge arrives. It is all by the mercy of Nichananda, who has made endless arrangements to spread Krishna consciousness everywhere. Then, right, then we become touched by that, not knowing what it is at all, no idea. Right? But we become touched in some way or other. Uh, and it has a tremendous effect. Um, one year I was in Mayapur, and I met a personality who was, uh, um, he was different. He looked like an, like an artist, like a painter. He had the, uh, a beret, like painters have. He had a little beard and a mustache, like Salvador Dali type, you know. And as soon as I saw him, I thought, a painter, right? And then, then I saw this painter, and in Mayapur, I usually get up really early. It's sort of my place where I try to rejuvenate. So I was up really, really early. And then I saw that this guy was already up. That's early. And then I saw that he was all day in the temple going to all the artists, seven artists. He was attending seven artists. And, and I saw him chanting Hare Krishna the whole day, the whole day. And he'd already been chanting the whole night, right? And now he was chanting the whole day as well. So after a few days, I went up to him and I said, who are you? Are you a demigod? <laughs> <laughs> you know, how can any ordinary person do such a thing, right? So he said, maybe. <laughs> Anyway, that didn't resolve it. Uh, that didn't resolve it. But then, then I saw that later it came out what, what really had happened. Um, in 1967, he had seen Prabhupada in San Francisco. He said, he wrote a poem and he wrote, I saw that old man, I saw that old man and his followers, and I kept a safe distance. And I could see, not safe enough, not safe enough. He developed faith. Although he kept a distance, even from a distance, he developed faith. Um, he developed faith that actually this transcendental knowledge, this chanting of the holy name uh, will bring 
will bring real happiness. That faith he developed. Huh? Faith goes wherever we think that happiness is to be found. If we think it's money, then you think, you know, uh, happiness comes from money, then our faith is about I don't know, money, money. If it is sex, then it's about sex. Wherever we think that it is, power, uh, wherever we think our happiness is found, that's where our faith goes. So somehow or other, Prabhupada managed to transform this person and instill the faith in him that happiness is found in Krishna consciousness. This is exactly the mercy of Nichananda. Um, he creates this, this faith um, that this is where real happiness is found in devotional service, in chanting Hare Krishna, in somehow or other dedicating our lives to Krishna. And that can create miracles. Then one can do anything when there's faith. Then we can do anything. Then we can wear awkward clothes. I mean, I would have never imagined, really, as I was young, I could have never imagined that I would have at one point in my life walk around like this, you know. <laughs> really. I mean, to be honest, that was the last thing I could have imagined. I mean, like it's pretty eccentric, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. It's definitely different, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, people regularly, people let me know that I am different. For example, now we have this uh, this issue with this virus. And some years ago, there was another virus, SARS. Right? I went to Canada. I come at the border and they stop me uh, because my last name is, is a Dutch name which also exists in China, somehow or other, the same name is also, so the, the computer flagged me as Chinese. <laughs> so the guy said, you're Chinese, right, <laughs> at, the, at the immigration, are you Chinese? Then I said, do I look Chinese? <laughs> and he looked at my clothes and he said, well. <laughs> and next I was in a room, you know, with a guy with, with a mask and rubber gloves and being investigated. And shh, I had to talk my way out of that. Anyway. So, but why? Why do we endure all these things? Huh? Why? Why be a strict vegetarian? Why? I mean, little veg, little bit, but you know, strict. Really, why? Not even a non-vegetarian kitchen. Why? Right? Why? Why all these things? Uh, you know, boy loves girl, girl loves boy. Valentine's Day. Yeah, just now coming. Ah, you know, what to do? Ah, yes. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Sorry, Valentine's Day. But, you know, no, no free relationships, only within marriage. Oh, only within marriage. It was a shock. The word marriage itself was a shock. <laughs> it's like, really? Do we have to do that? Yes. Um, oh, God. So, all these... Living by principles. Living by principles that are very different from modern society. Very different. Uh, almost archaic, you know, almost something from, from another era. From, and yet we are living this way. No meat, fish, eggs, very strict, pure vegetarian, even from vegetarian sources. Uh, no free relationships, no gambling, no intoxication, no coffee or tea. I mean, Uh, I see people sometimes they go like coffee and I go mm -hmm. and, it's like, oh, God. <laughs> and they look at me like oh my god is it 
that bad? <laughs> Is it that bad with you? Uh, so how to have the faith to be so different in this world? That faith, if it's based on just knowledge, I said, yeah, this is based on the Vedic literature. Uh, I've studied these, shist these shastra, these scriptures. Everything is based on books. Can you live a life based on books? Huh? Just books? Who can dedicate his life to just following a book? Unless, unless there is some taste. That is the essence. It is taste that moves everything. Without it, it is not possible. Book knowledge, it says in scripture, Balavan Indriyam Gamo Vidvam Sama Sati, the senses are so strong that even, a, even one who is learned will fall down. Uh, but the devotees of Nichananda are not falling down because the devotees of Nichananda are experiencing actually great happiness. That is the key. Ah, Nichananda. Nichananda always ecstatic. Sometimes, sometimes dancing. Sometimes, sometimes um, throwing his red iron stick up in the air to prove that he's a coward boy. Nichananda. Ah, Nichananda Mm, he's a sadhu, but, and he's a renunciant, but he doesn't dress like one. He doesn't. He's got jewels all over the place, everywhere, on his turban, big turban with jewels everywhere, rings, <laughs> earrings, everything, bangles, you name it. I mean, some decoid saw him, said the guy's loaded. <laughs> really, look at that, you know. I mean, if we basically, basically, if we clean up this guy, <laughs> we got him made for life. Every thief, every thief is looking for the one catch, you know, where he's got a made for life. I mean, that's, that's the dream, a thief's dream, right? I mean, steal a bit here, steal a bit there, but that one hit where you just clean up for life. The decoys were determined. Oh, Nichananda was performing his Sankirtan party on the order of Lord Chaitanya in West Bengal, going everywhere from village to village, and the kirtan never ended. It was not from, there was a beginning and an end. It was just continuous. And that kirtan was very powerful because that kirtan would attract all kinds of people who would just some, be drawn to it. They didn't know what it was, but they were just drawn to the kirtan and they just joined it. It is said there was a group of young boys. They were 30 days in that kirtan and they didn't eat or drink at all. And they didn't become weak. They became stronger and stronger and more and more fired up. And at the end of, of the months, they ripped trees out of the ground. That's how fired up they became. Meanwhile, old men, old men jumped up, jumped up in trees and danced on the branches, even on the little ones, small branches, and they didn't break. And people would come from everywhere to see this kirtan. And people disappeared in the kirtan. Whole villages disappeared into the kirtan. So this was going on, believe it or not. Mm, yes. So it was going on, all based on ecstasy, simply. Uh, yes, that is the idea. Devotional service is about giving ourselves completely with all that we have. That is the ecstasy. It's not just about that the musicians are getting into it because they like music. No, everyone was getting into it because uh, when, we, when we do the best we can, that gives inner satisfaction. Uh, when we give everything we have, that brings satisfaction. That is Nichananda. 
Not, he doesn't half dedicate himself. He fully dedicates himself. And in this way, in this way, uh, there is deep satisfaction. And so, we are following in the footsteps, following his example. We cannot serve like Nityananda can serve, but we can follow the example. And that is how we rely on Nityananda completely. Uh, it is his example. He serves, then we serve also. He becomes a menial servant, then we become a menial servant. He is ready to do anything, all right, we are ready to do anything. He is chanting, all right, we are chanting. He is dancing, all right, we are dancing. In this way, following in the footsteps. And so, our strength comes from Nichananda's example. And just simply looking at him, and, and we see. Uh, in his early childhood, Nichananda has showed pastimes of enacting the various lilas of different incarnations of the Lord. Uh, sometimes acting out the form of Lord Nisringa, sometimes acting out the form of Krishna and lifting Govardhan, and other times acting out the pastimes of Ramachandra. At one point, he was playing Laksman. Of course, Nichananda was Laksman in the previous life. Yes. So he was acting out the pastime of Laksman, and Laksman was being shot by Indrajit. And as Laksman had been shot by Indrajit, then Lak Laksman fell unconscious on the ground. All this was a game. And Nichananda had told one of the boys who was acting out the part of Hanuman that when I fall unconscious on the ground, you must go and bring this healing herb, uh, this Mirchisam Jivani that can, that can revive everyone. So, but when in the, in the play, suddenly Nichananda fell to the ground in the mood of Laksman. And he's lying there unconscious. Everyone forgot. And everyone just think, oh, a terrible accident has happened. What do we do now? And uh, this is just child play. Adults came to see what had happened. And it's like, he's lying there on the ground, unconscious. What do we do? Huh? In the middle of the game, one of the children is lying on the ground, unconscious. What are you going to do? Oh, you run to the adults. They did. But then what happened? Then what happened? The boy who was supposed to bring the herb forgot all about it. Anyway, they somehow or other, somehow or other, the adults reconstructed what had happened and then someone said, oh, then is there someone who has to bring the herb? He's Laksman. Will someone bring the healing herb? Is there Hanuman? Then one boy, oh yes, yes, yes. He's Hanuman. Then Hanuman went and brought the necessary herb, brought the whole mountain. And Laksman was revived. So the way Lord Nichananda performed these pastimes showed such deep absorption. Such deep absorption. And the, some of the adults were saying, but my dear, my dear, my dear boy, where are you getting all this all these pastors, all this information, how come you know all these things? Then he said, these are my own pastimes. And I'm just performing them for your pleasure. Right? In this way, uh, Nichananda was the Supreme Lord reenacting, reenacting pastimes that he had performed before. Um, Mm. Ekla Ishvara or Sarva Bricha Yari Aichanaitya Tara Kurchanritya. There is one Supreme Lord, Krishna, and all others are dependents, Bricha. And all others they simply dance as he makes them dance. So none of us is independent. We all are controlled. Uh, 
puppets on a string, a kattira puttali, wooden dolls on strings, and when the string is pulled, there we go. Yeah. Uh, we have to act, but we are not in control. Uh, we remember how uh, the three modes of material nature, prakriti, kriyamana, niguni, karmani, sarvasa, they create circumstances like today there was that wind, icy wind, right? Everybody started to dress up like anything. Uh, not that I just felt like dressing up. No, I was freezing, so I dressed up. Right? It wasn't just, it wasn't out of choice. I had to. It was, you know, it was necessary. Uh, so in this way, so many things. Uh, you're 10 years old, you ring the doorbell of your friend, and you ask him to come outside to play. You're 20 years old, you ring the doorbell, and your boy, you ring at the doorbell of the girl and ask her if she comes. Huh? You're 30 years old, you go outside to find the kids. You're 40 years old, right? you think, seen it all, heard it all, done it all. You're 50 years old, you're over the hill. You're 60, you're losing it. You're, you're 70, everybody knows it, right? <laughs> You know, at 80, it's wheel him in, right? <laughs> and anywhere beyond that, you know. I mean, I don't know how it is here, but in, in Amsterdam, where I'm from, if you're uh, 100 years old, the mayor comes to congratulate you on your birthday. <laughs> you know, it's like, cause it doesn't happen very often. That's for sure, you know. Yeah, it's so... Uh, what can we say? Um, so it's interesting how each age brings its own its own interest, how it changes. You know, I mean, now if you come and ring at my doorbell, you want to come and play outside. I go, well, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You know, I've outgrown it. You know, I mean, in a different phase of life. But when I was 10, you know, I was the first one out, right? What has changed? I'm the same person. But now in a different phase of life. So, in other words, we are controlled. We are controlled. Huh? You're a child and then suddenly the hormones start working and then it's called puberty. Right? And it's just a few hormones that change everything, that make everything horrible. Right? <laughs> you know, what to do? Huh? So you can see how we are not free in making choices, how we are dictated by things. Mm. Yes. But devotional service is the one opportunity that can actually uh, set, us, set us free. In devotional service, for the first time, we can make an actual choice. You have people, they are really into astrology. Huh? They're looking at this and that and so on. And uh, yes, that is a fact. Is it true that everything is predestined by the planets? They ask Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, prayiti to kuvido. He's saying, yes, everything is predestined. Everything is predestined until you take up devotional service. Then you actually have a freedom of choice. Otherwise, just predestined. Uh, just by karma. I'm, I use the example of the suitcase. Yeah? The suitcase that has no wheels. Nowadays, every suitcase has wheels, but the once upon a time, you know, children, listen to this. Once upon a time, there were suitcases that had no wheels, believe it or not. And people would be carrying it around, these suitcases. And I've been doing it myself. And I tell you, 
You've been carrying these suitcases. Well, you were carrying the suitcase in one hand until your hands were like, you couldn't get your fingers straight. And then you would carry it, <laughs> carry it in your other hand, you know. And then when you get tired of carrying them in your hand, you would carry it on your back, you know. And then you carry it on your head. You somehow or other carried a suitcase wherever you could carry it. But all you could do was move the thing around, you know, because you're carrying the suitcase. And that's karma. <laughs> yes. So, what can we do? Um, and then how to get free from this karma? How to, by higher taste. Simply by serving Krishna, by becoming attracted to serving Krishna, can we rise above. Um, but it's difficult if I come to you like this, you know, you should be really serving Krishna. <laughs> because then you will be happy. And then, and then you'll probably say, yeah, sure, Swami, I'll be right back, you know. <laughs> no. and see, see you in a minute, you know. <laughs> I mean, not convincing. Uh, but when there's happiness, when it's really ecstatic, then it's different. That is Nichananda. Nichananda, uh, his kirtan went all over Bengal. It was a huge festival. And... As I said before, people from a particular village would go into that kirtan and would not come out. They would just stay in the kirtan. So the, the rest, some family members would go and look for them. And then they also came to the kirtan and they also disappeared in the kirtan. Then other villagers would come. Whole villages were swallowed up by the kirtan. That's how amazing that kirtan was. It was not a show. It was just... Everyone completely put their heart into it and gave it their everything. Uh, it, it's the heart that speaks. It's not about the voice, not about the technique. It's, it's just simply, just the heart was in the kirtan to such an extent that people fully gave themselves in that kirtan. Uh, chanting and dancing and hearing um, yeah. And so is devotional service. Nichananda expands himself. Uh, the Supreme Lord, what, he's not limited to one form like we. I mean, I wish I could have a few more forms. That would be great. You know, yeah. That would be wonderful. I would be all over the planet at the same time. <laughs> and it would be one form that would be permanently sleeping <laughs> to rest for all the others. You know? <laughs> that would be great. Okay. <clears throat> that would be really good. <clears throat> but no, I'm stuck with this, and it's not getting any better. Yeah. Anyway, this is what it is. But... The Supreme Personality of Godhead, he's not limited. So Lord Nichananda expands himself in various forms. And he takes on the form of Anantases, uh, a form of, of a, a snake-like form with many, many hoods. Uh, and in that form, he becomes the bed of the Lord. He becomes the umbrella of the Lord. Um, he, he serves him in so many ways. Nichananda is, it is said that the mouth of, of Ananta Sesh is the jewel case of glorification. Mercy is, yes, there's causeless mercy, which just hits you without being asked for it. But then, once that causeless mercy matures, then we ourselves become eager to attract it. So, um, by, by hearing, um, we become attracted to glorify Krishna. 
It begins like that. Oh. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam. First there's hearing. From that hearing comes the desire to speak about Krishna. And as we are chanting and speaking about Krishna, then our remembrance of Krishna will increase. And as our remembrance of Krishna will increase and change, uh, yes, then everything changes. I myself, somehow or other, uh, I was uh, into music, played guitar, and I met this uh, piano player who in, in Amsterdam, who was doing uh, ragas. He had been in India, he did ragas. I also did a few ragas on guitar. So then uh, we did some ragas together. So we're doing the whole thing on ragas, and it was like uh, kind of, uh, and it was percussion, it was exciting. And then he says, let's do some mantra. I said, yeah, why not? Raga, mantra, all spiritual sound from India. So, you know, in the same category. And he starts chanting Hare Krishna mantra. His name was Burton Green. And, you know, and we chanted the Hare Krishna mantra. Years later, I read Prabhupada's Lilam Rita. And I read that Burton Green was here in the Master's Gift store from in New York. And they found this old string board from a piano and he used to play on it during the during the kirtans. Wow. Yeah. He said, like, wow, I got the holy name in Parampara, you know. <laughs> 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 came, came from Prabhupada. That's really something. So somehow or other. But at that time, for me it was a mantra. The holy I saw the holy name as a mantra, as spiritual sound, sound with spiritual power. And that was it. I had no further concept of the Holy Name. Now, when you say Krishna, okay, immediately, there he is, the flute. Oh, flute, as soon as you say flute, there are many flutes, right? There's, there's Venu, there's Murali, there is, uh, there is this uh, Mamsuli, there is this uh, uh, Mahananda flute that the coward boy is using, a really big one, that also someone's used as a stick to hurt the cows. So many different flutes. Uh, bamboo flutes, marble flutes, <coughs> decorated with jewels, uh, murali. So, like this, as soon as you say flute, now I know so many things about flutes. Uh, I can tell pastimes with the flute. I can give an hour lecture on the flute, no problem. Two hours maybe. I can talk for a while on the flute. Right? And any topic now. Because my remembrance of Krishna has changed. I've heard so many things. And therefore now I see Krishna very different. Now we say lotus, oh, lotus eyes. So by hearing about Krishna, everything changes. Because once we hear about Krishna, then naturally our attraction to Krishna also changes. We become attracted. The more we hear about Krishna and all this and his nature, the more we become attracted, then our chanting will change. Um, and in this way, hearing, chanting, remembering, as the remembering changes, then our devotional service changes and becomes ecstatic. Um, in the beginning, it was saying, this is your, it is your spiritual duty to follow following the like principles. Otherwise, you are entangled in sinful activities. <laughs> this is very dry. But when we speak about um, discovering the, the nature of Krishna, then there's the greatest ecstasy. This is Nichananda. Nichananda is not just in ecstasy, not just jumping around. Nichananda is appreciating every quality of Krishna. Nityananda is, is seeing the amazing nature of Krishna. And therefore, his love for Krishna, he's being conquered by Krishna's amazing qualities. Uh, love is not some sort of sentiment which is sticky and which is kind of just like a, like a wet blanket 
Yeah? Some sort of all-pervading love. And then there was love. And everyone was full of love. And we shared that love. And the atmosphere was so full of love. That's the kind of wet blanket love. <laughs> you know. But when love is about qualities, and I love someone's qualities, and the more qualities I discover, and the more of these qualities I love, then, yeah, then it becomes like, then I become conquered. Um, not only by looks, but by character, by dealings, you know, Just like Prabhupada, Prabhupada conquered us. He conquered us. It's not just that, okay, Srila Prabhupada is a pure devotee. Oh, okay, then I should surrender to him. Because in the scripture it says you must follow pure devotee. No, that's dry, sterile. But no, Prabhupada, I like it personally that when Prabhupada was a kid, was a kid that he used to steal money from his mother to go to the Charlie Chaplin movies. <laughs> so, I'm so glad that he did that. <laughs> I did it too. <laughs> and, um, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one. It made him so human. And yet he's a pure devotee. Yeah? Totally dedicated to Krishna. It brings him close, you know, his qualities. Yes, his personality. This is Nichananda in relation to Krishna. He's discovering the qualities of Krishna, and as he is, his love awakens. That's his ecstasy. To see, to actually relish these amazing qualities. And in this way, in this way, Nichananda's ecstasy is profound and real and based on the qualities of Krishna. And therefore, it awakens in us the same, a desire to explore the qualities and nature of Krishna. And it is in that way that we taste genuine ecstasy, not plastic, cheap, imitation ecstasy, you know, Disney World style, but the real thing. Because of the qualities. Love cannot, there's no love by declaration. Love is based, someone has to conquer. And not once, again and again, you can conquer, you know, once upon a time when you're 17 years old, you conquered me, but now you're, you know, 27 and it's been 10 long years and you didn't conquer no more, and therefore, you know, I'll say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how it goes. Uh, in loving exchange, it is an ongoing thing. Conquer again and again. Even in marriage, if you want your marriage to work, conquer again and again. Yeah. Don't think now the ring is there, it's done. <laughs> it's like, it's a, it's a battle. And a, uh, yes, ring is on there. That's that doesn't mean the job's done at all. Yeah. It's, it's easy to pull off the ring. That's not too hard. Little soap here, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no. Real love is based on conquering and being conquered uh, by the qualities of a person. And it is in this way that Nichananda's mercy is reaching us. His genuine love for Krishna is reaching us and awakening in us the same. And that is the mercy of Nichananda. And that is the meaning of mercy and nothing less. If mercy doesn't bring you to love of God, it is no mercy at all. must bring us to love of God. 
So this day is a day of great importance because this is a day where indeed by praying to each another, by rendering some service to each another, assisting him in, in his service to Krishna, we can take the first step on the path of developing our natural love for God. And as, we, as it begins to awaken, we also experience, hey, this is great. This is actually the most wonderful thing I've ever encountered. And that is what Nichananda embodies, that is what he brings, and that is what he teaches. Amen, now, any questions?